it's uh, basically an overview of the paper. You have two sections, section A and section B. Section A is compulsory. And this is where I feel most of the students uh, uh, feel confused or because it's compulsory, it is a mixture of micro and macro uh, economic problems. So, and this requires a lot of time. You have two hours and 15 minutes for the whole paper and you have to do total four questions. So I would recommend spending 45 minutes on question one and 30 minutes each on three questions of section B. If you spend more than 45 minutes on question one, you will not be able to complete section B. Section B is comparatively smaller. Each question is smaller. They are easier, but don't spend more than 45 minutes on question. Uh, one, which is in section A. Think of this uh, question one as a comprehension question. It has a story and the questions are linked to it. Obviously it's economics based. You should have economics concepts on your fingertips, but read the story like a comprehension. You underline the relevant parts and uh, underline the relevant parts, and then try to understand the story, what they're trying to say in the... Uh... So I chose this paper. It's from May, June, 2020, and it's about Pakistan. And uh, that's not the only reason why I chose it. Uh, I chose this paper because it, if you see the section B part of it, it has a lot of uh, topics which are there in your course, which are very important. And they, uh, I think it's a summary of all your economics course, basically this paper. So spend two minutes just going through it. This first part is uh, the story, which I was uh, telling you about. Pakistan has a number of economic challenges. And then they tell us all these challenges, for example, rising population, trade in goods and uh, services, controlling countries inflation, increasing countries economic growth rate. And the government is trying to increase investment, which is uh, and increase its government spending. Currently, lots of uh, the industry is producing more of the consumer goods. Government is also subsidizing entrepreneurs and charities to open low cost schools. So we're discussing merit goods now. Uh, so, so far, we've come up with all the macroeconomic problems a developing country could face, education, uh, inflation, et cetera. Children are not being sent to school because maybe there are not enough schools. You don't have enough teachers. The government has improved school buildings and number of children attending but has not increased the teacher's wages. So basically the quality of teachers would be low. Uh, the quality of teaching standards would be low, I should say. Also, the supply of teachers would be low. Secondly, the qualifications of teachers are going to be increased in the future. So, and we'll have questions related to this later on. Then they compare GDP per head with imports per head. So, and then they discuss import tariffs, revenue from import tariffs, and uh, so on, other trade policies. I'm going to come to the question. This is the main part. Basically, all these questions, as I said before, they are compulsory. The first part, calculate Pakistan's trade in goods balance. You need to identify, uh, you need to focus on these key points calculate, identify, explain. All these have different requirements and you need to look at the marks also. They will tell you the, uh, the quantity of the answer. So if, you, if they say calculate, usually it's a data-based uh, question. So you will need to calculate something. Either it's a percentage, which is, which is any fraction times 100, or in this case, it's trade and goods balance. That would be your exports minus imports. So remember the answer will be negative 30 something in billion. Don't forget to give the 
uh, the dollar sign because it's in dollars and don't forget the negative sign. Otherwise, this uh, you lose this easy mark. It's all about gaining these one, two marks and not losing them in careless mistakes. When they say calculate, that's basic. It's going to be a very simple calculation. Identify means you just have to list these two possible causes of demand pull inflation in Pakistan. Most of the time, the reason will be given in the case study. And uh, you just have to identify it from the text. Explain the opportunity cost to Pakistan of producing consumer goods. It's a two marks question. So the opportunity cost is obviously producing uh, consumer goods, uh, industrial, you're not producing industrial goods. And you just explain it a little bit because we have limited resources and they are being spent on producing consumer goods. Explain two reasons. This is not identify now. Why education is a merit good. This means they need more than a sentence. You should know what a merit good is. It will benefit the society. It has to be provided to have better living standards. It does not matter if the private sector is not providing it. It is the government's responsibility to provide this merit good. Education, health, these are examples of merit good. Analyze why the children of poor families tend to receive less education than children of rich families. I'm not going into details of this question. I want to focus on this part. When they say analyze, and it's a four marks question, they want details. You compare everything. Why people who are more privileged tend to receive more education. You just can't write, that's not the answer. You need to tell us why. You need to tell the examiner as if he doesn't know what's happening in the developing country and give a detailed answer. Uh, people belonging to poorer families, they have children, uh, they don't have resources to send them to school. They'd rather send their schools, uh, sorry, send their children to different uh, places to work. They are bread earners, basically. And that is a very prevalent problem in Pakistan. So even if we have minor uh, uh, laws regarding uh, minor employees, etc., still, if we look around us, it's uh, this problem is still there. Second reason could be that there aren't enough schools available. Even though government has increased the buildings and more people have joined school, no incentives have been given to teachers. Quality of education is poor. Uh, the provision of education is poor. There aren't many facilities which offer free education to the poor people. Analyze the relationship between GDP and imports. In this type of question, it's a five marks question, you will have to look at the data, the information provided in the data. In this case, it's this one. And not just tell us the figures. For example, Norway's GDP is the highest and its spending on imports is also very high. And you compare it with high teeth, low, and the import spending is also low very low but you have to give us a reason analyze means why why is it low one of the reasons could be that when gdp per head which basically means what the person is earning in the country each person if that's high they can afford more imported products when the income is low then you can not afford imported products if imported products are generally perceived to be more expensive also, there are some variations. For example, look at Russia. The GDP is high, but its spending on imports is lower than, let's say, Mexico, where the GDP is lower than Russia, but the spending on imports is higher. This could be due to some uh, policy. Russia maybe has a low import policy. Maybe they put tariffs on imports. Maybe they are very, very expensive. Maybe they discourage imports. Uh, because they want to promote their local industry or their infant industry. So these are the, uh, there is no wrong answer. It should make sense and you should give more details. Not just read what's on the table, but give a reason for why that might be the case. Then we come to the discuss question. These discuss questions are later on in section B also. Part B of every question is a discuss question. Discuss questions always have an advantage, disadvantage, pros and cons, two sides of the story, basically. And you're supposed to list both. You 
may or may not give your opinion in the end. It is not required, but you are supposed to list the uh, advantages, disadvantages, or for and against of what they're asking. So in this case, discuss whether or not the supply of teachers in Pakistan is likely to increase in the future. I'm going to go up where there's a paragraph about uh, teachers and you have to extract information from this paragraph as well as whatever knowledge you have about supply of labor as well as about the education sector of any developing country, compare it to a developed country. Supply of labor may increase if 